Today we have the most famous and what really should be the most beloved of all of our Lord Jesus' parables, the parable of the prodigal son. This parable, however, is the quintessential revelation by Jesus of God the Father. If you want to know exactly who God the Father is and how he operates, this is the clearest picture of him. There's so many terribly interesting details about this parable, but here are two main ones that I want you all to consider. First, the parable starts, starts off with the son telling his father to basically drop dead. It ends with the son telling his father to drop dead. But we start off with the younger son, wild, impetuous, very little discipline or moral standards. He's being incredibly selfish. He wants his inheritance and he wants it now. Now what's the problem? Back in those days, you only got your inheritance if your father had already died. But the father's still very much alive. So when the younger son is telling the father, asking him for my money, I want it now, he's basically saying what? I wish you were dead. Now the father, this is representative of God the father, he doesn't stop him. Nor he's even tried at this point to reason with him. The younger son receives the inheritance, he receives the money. If we turn our backs to our God, if we like the son, tell the father, I, I wish you were out of my life, I wish you were dead. We want to get all the material stuff that we want. Well, God's not going to stop us, but he will let us suffer the consequences of our actions, which, by the way, is an act of love. And that, of course, is what happens to this younger son. Since he has no discipline, he spends all of his inheritance and just on all kinds of crazy stuff. He becomes so poor, the only job he could get was feeding the pigs in some distant country. Remember now, this was a Jewish boy. Being around pigs all day was the lowest of the low you could get. But he wises up, comes to his senses. He sees his great mistake and decides to go back home. We do the same so very often we find ourselves in such lowly positions because of our choices. But when we do decide to come back to our father, what sort of reception will we receive? We'll get to that in just a second. The younger son does go home. The father restores him to his place of honor as a son, but also restores his dignity. He restores his sense of belonging, all great things that God the Father will do for us. But the father in our story now must deal with the older son. He, the son, had been faithful. He'd been the faithful one, one who was always there at the estate for his father. But he certainly was not happy at all when the youngest son came back home. So the father tries to reason with him the oldest son is so upset that his foolish younger brother is back, he tells off his father. He won't listen to reason. He will not even go into the house to celebrate his brother's return. When the father tries to talk to him, the oldest son is so angry, he basically tells his father to drop dead. For those of you who might have been or are still in this position, you've been the faithful brother or sister. You were the one who always did what you're supposed to, now one of your siblings, who lived a terrible life with terrible choices, now comes home and gets all the attention, and there you are feeling all sorry for yourself? Take to heart the words the father told the oldest son. The words, by the way, that God the Father will say to you, my son, my daughter, you're here with me always. Everything I have is yours. That's an incredible reality. Everything the father has is the son's. But why wasn't he happy? Why was he so upset? How come he didn't rejoice when his brother finally came back home? Well, it's actually very simple. He knows how to carry out orders. He does not know how to love. He doesn't understand how his father could still love that son. He does not welcome or forgive or even want to have anything to do with the younger brother because he does not know how to love. But what an example of love he had with the father right there in front of him. His father, just like God the father, loves no matter what. He loves no matter what. The younger son had totally disrespected the father, but the father showing us how God the father acts, gave him the money, let him go, but loved him no matter what. He never stopped loving him. Just as God the father would never stop loving us. He will love us completely and totally, always and everywhere. We simply have to love him back. But here's something else to consider about how much God the Father loves us as shown by the Father in this parable. 
There are a few things that the Father in our story does which God the Father will do for us. First of all, the Father was constantly looking out for the return of his younger son. He did not give up on his boy, but always looking out in the distant horizon to see if he would be coming back home. Secondly, when the Father does see the younger son coming way back in the distance, he goes out and runs toward him. That's important for a couple of very important reasons. First, back in that culture, it was not considered dignified for an older man to run. People, family, friends, others, they would run to you. You wouldn't run to anybody. But he ran, telling us what? God runs to us. The father sees his son coming back. He doesn't even consider how foolish he might look or how undignified. He loves him so completely, it compels him to run to his son. But this running to his son has another very important aspect to it. The father is running the gauntlet. Or in other words, he was going out in front of some potentially hostile people to make sure his son was safe. Now think about it now, guys. The father of our parable was a rich man, owned a very large estate. He was in charge of a lot of people. But remember, the younger son had taken off pretty much half of the money, half of the estate, a big part of the family fortune. That would have affected everybody. The older brother, other relatives, the servants. Things would have been tough because of the selfishness of the younger son. This simply means that the younger son would not have been welcomed back nicely when, if he ever did come back home, as you see with the reaction of the older brother. And perhaps some of the relatives, maybe even some of the servants, that have been so angry, they might have gotten violent with the younger son. I want to give him a good beating for what he had done. But see, that is why the father ran to his long lost son. He runs to get to him before anybody else so he can keep his son safe. God the Father waits for us to return. He keeps his eyes on us constantly, offering even from a distance the great love that is his. And then he runs to us when we do, when we do turn back to him, but he comes to get us, to receive us, to bless us with his protection, to make sure that nothing will stop us from coming back home safe and sound. And for us as Catholics, that's all done through the sacraments. We have an incredible father who is our God. So to sum things up, it was St. Alphonsus Liguori who once said, he who trusts in himself is lost. He who trusts in God can do all things. What does it cost us to say, my God, help me, have mercy on me. Is there anything easier than that? <laughs>